as you can see, it launches the uh, iOS simulator. Um, if you look, you can't see it now, but there's a, a deploy tab that tells you the progress of where it is at. Um, just as you would, it tells you what it's launching, when it's the debug, etc. Are you running Lion or so I think? Lion. So it's all got the old logo on there. Um, we'll have to try and fix it before. Or, um, three goes out and try and get some nice. Okay. So the idea is um, the mouse runs away from the cat and the tank chases the cat. Yeah, so again, this is a XMA mirror, so you can see you know, we've got like state changes. So just showing you basic tracking and stuff. So that's running on the platform. So, when you change it, and if you run that, all goes well. You should just have a blank, blank screen with maybe a, from the template, just a screen in the middle. So, you have to update these as well. It says add blanks in there. So, that's, that's our blank template. Alright, now, maybe you can do this in Visual Studio, but I've not managed to. Directory. Now, let's see, we've got, I mean, we're going to have a problem with these. Do you know where those are? Because I believe the XMB files that it was generated. There, I don't have any. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is like straight from the website. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll let you know. So we can go through the whole process of getting errors and stuff. Um, so, so we know what. Um, typically, I would move that directory into the actual hierarchy itself because we try and share, we try not to duplicate the code, so we just add links to the original code and then just add the S as and when. Yep. So let's add a link to those. So we can change them in one, one project there reflected. Uh, let's add files here. Add files from folder in Visual Studio. No. I think it is. Because I'm, because when I'm trying, yeah, I've not found it. I've not found a way to do it. So it always takes bloody ages to pull stuff. But anyway.
So, in this case, we've got an if def where it says Windows Phone. Uh, let's go like this. So, it's about 10 minutes to get compiled. When it blends. <laughs> Unlikely because the, obviously the TGA files are there. But we'll see, we should see some errors. So, sort of, yeah, we could not load cat asset, which we know is a TGA file. I haven't used Mono game much um, just yet, but how do you deal with the namespaces of libraries, Microsoft.xna? We copy we, we are all our classes, and even though our assembly at the moment is called Mono game, the framework, all the classes exist in the correct namespaces. Okay. Yeah. So basically, we've, we've mapped one to one the, the API, okay. so it's exactly the same. So yeah. the theory is you can take the game in XNA, um, create a new project, and all the content. Unless there's something we've missed or an API okay. that we haven't quite got right. Yeah. We previously had it as a separate, it was under the XNA touch namespace, it would be XNA dot, you know, XNA touch dot input or whatever, but we just thought the least, the less that people have to mess around with it, the yeah. better. Because I thought I would start with grab Microsoft everything. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Okay, so complete. Hold on. 
assets that you're guarding and forming each other for and then transforming them into something else. Do we want to start? Yeah, go on. Um, well, what, what currently happens at the moment is we've got XNB support, which is um, with, with XNA at the moment, you, when you compile your uh, code in, in XNA's game studio, there's a content project and it compiles the assets into an XNB. Uh, what we can do, while we don't have a content compiler, what we can do is you can compile that content on Windows and then just take the XNB files and, and use them in. Um, in your iOS and your and all the other apps. Uh, Don doesn't because he's on Mac, he has more access and he's using parallel, he doesn't have access to the build studio, so he's doing it a bit more manually. Um, so that's that's normally the way we do it. Until we get the content pipeline. Yeah. And once we've done that, then yeah, yeah, exactly it for like that be part of the build process. I mean what we've got is just have say like a um, a shared drive or a um, what do you call it? Dropbox. Between the two machines. Okay, oh, look. so uh, it's, it's loaded the cat, but we don't have a pipeline in the right format because uh, that's one thing that we definitely don't support, which is sprite fonts. Uh, as in, we don't support them in the dot sprite font format, we support them as, as SMBs, uh, which is one of the things we compile anyway. So um, it's. Uh, It's just the text, so you don't need really anything fancy. Um, so, is the content export uh, proprietary for Microsoft? The um, compiler to XMB? Not really, no, because they, they've released code for it. Alright. Um, with the, the, the reader that we've got, it wasn't it, it wasn't hacked together by someone who was engineering the XMB files and might actually released this is the file format for the XMB okay. file. They didn't release the code, so but they did release the file format, so we can build up from that. And you can infer from that the actual writer. Um, we do have a guy that's actually written the content the, the writer for his own project we got in touch with us the other week. Um, and we're hoping to get him on board and see if we can can you, you know, collaborate and, and get that done. To mention, just you just have to make sure that obviously when you're when you're adding your PNGs and stuff, um, that the build actually is content, otherwise it'll be fine. Yep. Uh, same. Uh, like I think Mono develop automatically changes its content if it's an image, but it doesn't recognise XMB. So I need to have a word with you guys to actually find out how if we can inject our own. I can do that. Oh, you can. All right. Cool. Or so you don't. Also. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so now that should hopefully be everything. Let's see what breaks out.
in the race anyhow. So hopefully, if it, if, if it stops again, then, then we'll, we'll stop. Unless it's like something really obvious. Wait! Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so, this is. Needs um, a bit more tweaking, I think. Hey? Needs a bit more tweaking, but it's running. Yeah, so things like uh, text. Well, I used a, an area with another text, which was probably bigger than the, what was intended here. So I just grabbed that and put it in. So hopefully, things like detection distance works. Yeah. You can see that the, the flocking algorithm changes and the separation distance. Uh, and just add a, add a cat into the mix and see they kind of avoid. That was under 13 minutes, actually. So, yeah. so.